Hello, family. This is Dr. L, the Parent Whisperer, with another episode. We have an expert with us today. I have Miss Kimberly Spencer, and she is an award-winning certified high-performance coach and trainer and founder of crownyourself.com. I am very excited to bring her on today. Uh, she has some amazing information. Her story is amazing, and I would love for you guys to hear all about it. So without further ado, Kimberly, take it away. Dr. L, thank you so much for having me on. It is a pleasure and an honor to speak with you again. I love the work that you are doing in the world as the parent whisperer, as a parent myself, I can definitely say. I am, yeah, so I, I am a certified high performance coach and the founder of crownyourself.com. I started growing my business when I found out I was pregnant. Because prior to that, I had been uh, the owner of an e-commerce company, the co-owner, and I was bought out three months before I got married. Well, I, the buyout process started three months before I got married, and then I was bought out three weeks before I got married. I was left on my honeymoon wondering, what am I going to do when I get back? And I was stuck in this space, and I was like, I, 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 I was trying to figure it out, and I suddenly like leaped off the couch. I probably had way too many espressos, and I said, "Crown yourself." And my husband was like, "What's that?" I was like, "I don't know, <laughs> but we're gonna go with it." And but at the same time, while I had the idea, I also, for the first time in my life, had crushing doubt because for the past three months, I'd had my integrity called into check. I mean, dealing with lawyers, I would never wish on anyone. And I had my capabilities. I had, you know, my age called into check. And so I questioned everything about, am I the person really to lead this? Am I like, yeah, I can, I've worked in two businesses. I've grown two businesses. Can I do it again? And I was still stuck in such a victim mindset and a mindset of blame and shame and complaining and resentment. And it was not sexy. And so for a year and a half, I was in this mindset and I had such low self-worth. And then I found out that I was pregnant. And that moment was just such an awakening moment for me because I was like, this version of me, this person, I do not want that to be the mother of my child. I want... I, I knew I wanted something better for my son and I never wanted my son to look at me and hear me say that everything is possible and yet see me still doubt myself, see me still delaying on actually going for my dream, to see me still not building what I really love, not serving from a place of soul and purpose. And because kids listen to more of what we do than what we say anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, okay, so I immediately signed up for this uh, certification program. I got certified in NLP, timeline therapy, and hypnosis. And then I started coaching and I started building my business from there. And it has just been a glorious adventure. And while I have worked with many coaches, many extraordinary humans along the way, there has been no better coach than my son. Because as he has grown as this like little walking, now toddling, subco giant subconscious mind, he is uh, such a mirror for how I experience the world. And when I see him experience frustration, I'm like, oh, I see how he does that. Like, I know I do that. Okay, okay, cool, I can shift that. So it allows me such a, a daily shift and even to be able to pivot my responses, my reactions to constantly keep leveling up and, and growing and becoming better. I truly believe that we become better people as our children train us basically to be the best that we can be, so definitely. When, when we allow them to train yes, us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they train us the wrong way. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes we're like, oh, okay. I'm learning my patience is getting trained today. <laughs> exactly. All right. So uh, tell me, what is uh, so important about the topic and everything that you do about your coaching? Well, with high performance, it's really excel. It's it's living your life firing on all cylinders. It's it's going all in on all areas of you because I do not believe, and I I am now living proof that your success does not have to come at the sake of your family. Your your success does not have to come at the sake of your marriage. Yours you can have holistic success, and actually, they all support each other. And so, high performance is how do you get your 
yourself fight because you are the key you are, you are the the key person in each one of those scenarios like you are in you are the the common denominator right. and so knowing how to enhance your own performance as the common denominator knowing how to be more bold knowing how to ask for more help knowing how to be more productive so you're actually efficient with your time instead of like dawdling or dabbling knowing how to ha come and, and face the day with, with more energy than, than you had yesterday, knowing how to have the clarity of what it is that you want. What, what do you want for your life? What do you want for your family? What do you want for your, your business? What do you want for your marriage? Like what is the life that you want to be living and how can you consciously actively and daily choose to be the person who lives that life? I, I, at Role Model Mayor, we talk a lot about sustainability. And a lot of people, when they are trying to achieve something in their life, they always think it has to be an either or type of a thing, that they have to give up an important part of themselves or an important part of their life to go ahead and get something else. And what you're just describing is that if you actually think of that and mentality, that these things are actually supposed to support each other, the friend, the family is supposed to support the career and the career is supposed to support the family and you can bring all of it together. That's a very important concept to have. Yeah. Nothing will take your career, uh, your career or stymied your productivity or progress faster than your marriage going downhill or something happening with your kids. So having that, having that holistic success and that and mentality is essential. And actually it's, it's kind of a, the, the paradox that of, of the universe in essence is that it is an and is that yes you can be because i work with so many high achievers that they think well if i stop and celebrate and have gratitude for where i am now even though it's not where i want to be then like then am i like i'm not focused on my goal and where i'm going and i'm like you can have both you can both be grateful and celebrate where you are now and how far you've come like i was telling one of my clients just the other day i said you know, I know you haven't hit your first million million dollar a year yet, but look back 10 years ago to when you started your business. Do you think that hitting half a million, that version of you would be like having a freaking party right now? Like, <laughs> do you think that like we can stop and celebrate the fact that like you've made it so far in just six months and then let's go for the million. Like, and then let's 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 go for those goals you can have both your dreams and celebrate where you are and have the success and have that continuous growth and have that continuous momentum forward you can do both right exactly some people are so set on giving for instance that there is difficult for them to actually receive and that includes times when they are supposed to receive compliments and actually receive the good feeling that comes with accomplishing things, basically. Um, yeah. so, so it's just as important to be able to receive and to give. And you think about the last time you tried to give and somebody wasn't willing or able to receive, you kind of get like taken aback uh, by the yeah. fact that you weren't able to share, you weren't able to give and support and make somebody else feel great. So it's the same thing, even if, if you're a giver, just basically put that in the back of your mind that you're doing it for them, if not for yourself, and make them feel good by allowing yourself to receive, basically. Yeah, and that's, that's, a, that's such a practice of the, the feminine energy. Like the masculine energy is very giving. It's very, you know, push, push and put it out there and do. But the feminine energy is, is what a, I see a lot of, especially my parent mm. clients have been not really tapped into of the, the feminine energy of, of fulfillment, of being able to receive, of being able to like be rather than do. Right, exactly. And if you think of it in terms of electricity, energy actually flows from the feminine to the masculine. So that it's, it's that constant dialogue. I think of it like an infinity symbol. Like it's that constant being able to give and receive and have that flow, that constant flow and allowing it. And I tell all of my clients, start practicing receiving compliments. Mm -hmm. Like it is a practice. And as someone who used to have like massive body image issues and bulimia, like that was a practice that I started a decade ago was practicing like sitting and really letting a compliment nourish me. 
really letting myself receive and have that compliment, really allowing myself to receive and have that money, really allowing myself to receive and have the, the passion and to, to be doted on and to be cooked for like my husband is doing now. <laughs> like, right. it's, so it's, it's, it's allowing that practice of, of being able to, to receive. And it is a practice. It's like yoga. Awesome. So when people are looking for ways to excel, uh, what are the typical challenges uh, that they face in high performance? Well, with high performance specifically, a lot of people think that pro if I just am more productive, if I just f can squeeze more time out of my time, then I will be or have or do or be some, then I'll get the goal. But not necessarily is that the case, and especially not with high achievers. With high achievers and high performers, generally, as my mentor Brendan Burchard says, achievement is not the problem, alignment is. And so you can push and hustle and force, and again, it's that all that masculine energy to try to like really get yourself out there and be productive. But if it's not aligned, you're just spinning your wheels. You're not actually giving getting traction. Right. And like I have one. Um, one term that I say, I, I call productive procrastination. And so there are these things that we think are really important. Like I need, like productive procrastination is like, you know, you need to do the video for your sales page, but the laundry is not done yet. And so, you know what, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do the laundry instead of like, just sit your butt down, film the video. And I promise you the laundry will finish itself or you can ask if you have older kids you can ask your kids to help you with the laundry do you have and a camera really, in my house or something <laughs> <laughs> it really comes down to that preference versus a priority like yeah would you prefer to have a really clean immaculate house sure but is it a priority and is it that an essential needle mover for your business not necessarily like when i was a pilates instructor um a, a decade ago, I got to work with some really schmancy people in Hollywood and go to their houses and personally train them in their big mansions. And I would like walk around and be like, not everything is clean. Like it'd be, it'd be clean, but like think laundry would be elsewhere. And you know, someone hadn't yet picked up like the dry dog poop on the, on the floor. And I was like, does, does no one notice this? Like, <laughs> but as I started to like, chat with them, I would see that their mindset was always on bigger vision rather than on like the myopic of like what's in like the laundry or like picking up certain things or their kids toys being all over the house. And so their, their, their vision was always big. They were always focused on the bigger picture. And so they always had foresight for what was coming. And so somebody else will handle that. And I was thinking of that from, from the perspective of like, a queen or a king, like they're not going and making their own, you know, YouTube thumbnails. They <laughs> have someone who's doing that. They have someone who's picking up the house. They have someone. So those things, and, and if you're not blessed with that yet, like that's totally fine. But notice what is a preference versus what is a priority? Like the queens and kings, I, I imagine like they hold a bigger vision for what's going on in their country. And they're not the ones who are like in the ditches, in the dirt, like doing the little nitty gritty. They're not posting their own social media posts or things like that when it comes to business in using that as a metaphor. The same is true with my schmancy clients that I got to train when I was a Pilates instructor. Like they were so focused on where they were going, what they were creating, what they were building, how they were working on their body, how they were improving this vessel that they like, somebody else will get to that. It just, they, they knew it would get take care, taken care of and it didn't even bother them. And that was something that I was like, that is such a big mindset difference that I think a lot of starting solopreneurs and mompreneurs sometimes don't have, especially when you're starting a business and you, you're working with three kids and you're so used to laundry being the first priority and dishes being the first priority beyond like the, the, the vision that you have for your business or the vision that you have for what you want to do in the world beyond the your kids that that sometimes we're just trained and we got to flip that training on its head and so what i do as a coach is i look at like where are you allowing yourself to be distracted by the moment by things that are not necessarily urgent or important but 
that will get done eventually and really putting in those spaces for priorities for what is the priority that needs to get done today period right yeah in fact i think some of the people this is they've done it for such a long time it's become habitual they don't yeah, it's a, it. they're not even aware that they're doing this basically and yeah and i was i was chatting with one of my clients and she said she's a mom of three kids and she just you know, had launched her business and it turned out to be like more successful than she thought at a faster pace. And she's like, oh, I don't know what to do. And she was, she realized that her kids are, you know, old enough to be able to clean, like they can do some cleaning on their own. And so she started delegating because right now, and, and this is something that I'm building with my own family is building in the concept of we are a team. We are a family team doing this together. There is a purpose for all of us. And right now as a toddler, your purpose is to pick up your toys. <laughs> like, like you have a grander purpose I know for this world. Like I know my son has this massive purpose and whatever he achieves is totally fine. But his like right now to support me putting his toys away, that's support. Like that's rock on support and asking for that and really like asking for help is a practice. And I struggled with that myself in, in the first few years of, of being a mom um, for the first, it was about six months after my son was born and my business for the first time was making more money than my husband's. And so that was like stirred up all these new beliefs and Thank God for coaching because I was sitting there with my coach and I was like, yeah, and I'm, I make all the money and I do all the things and I'm taking care of the baby. And she's like, Kim, how, she goes, is, is your husband a pretty supportive guy of like what you're doing? And I was like, yeah. And she said, well, how often are you asking him for support with the baby? If you're the one bringing in mo the majority of the money. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Okay, cool. So I started the practice of asking for help and I sat him down and we've always had a, a foundational relationship of candor where we're very open and honest and vulnerable, even about the tough stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, I haven't been open with you and asking for help. And it changed the game. Like it changed the game for our relationship. It changed the game for my business because I suddenly felt more supported. And so I felt like I could be fully engaged in doing what I'm doing and not distracted. And so that way when I'm with my son, I am fully with my son. And that way when I'm with my husband, I am fully with my husband because I'm not trying to multitask all the things at once. That's a, that's a significant, huge point. Uh, everybody wants to be part of a team and be it the husband, be it the children. They all look for ways to contribute to their family and actually the people that they love and care about and making it whole. So that's a huge yeah. point basically to get them involved. It's empowering. It's empowering for the man. It's empowering for the woman. It's empowering for the children to basically know that they're needed, they're wanted, and they're useful in the family. Yeah. So absolutely. The the empowerment is so key, especially because in business, when I've helped um, business owners build teams, there's a big difference between A players and C players. And A players, when you're building a business and you want to hire people who are A players, they take initiative, they're self-starters, they take ownership, they build systems that are simple so that you can replace them should you want to. You probably won't want to. C players, however, build systems that are really complicated, that require a lot of extra maintenance so that they're almost irreplaceable so that they can't be replaced because they know they're not, they're not, they're not an A player. Right. And the thing is, is that so often what I've seen with, with parents and especially moms, more often moms and dads is that moms make themselves in a way, a, they're not there. It's not that I'm saying you're a C player, but they're making themselves create systems where they are essential to the system's survival instead of having the system be a rep, uh, rep, rep repeat it. Replicable. Rep, replicable. There we go. I was like, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, a rep, uh, replicable. Uh, that's one word that is just a challenge for me to say. <laughs> um, system that they can then delegate to then their kids or their husband. Like, and I, I, I saw this when I was traveling with my husband and uh, a client of mine was coming with us for her work. And she was, it was the first time she'd ever been away from her kid. 
and she was caught, she couldn't enjoy the fact that she was traveling, that she got to, you know, be in a cool hotel and have a bed all to herself. And like, because she was so anxious because her husband kept on checking in, her kid kept on checking in. They kept like, she was the bottleneck in her husband and her kid thriving. And so fortunately, because I was there, we were able to work through it, but she saw, oh my gosh, I've created these systems where my husband doesn't know how to serve my son. My son doesn't know how to serve himself and he's a 14 year old kid. So holy crap, Kim, like, <laughs> like I got some work to do. I was like, yes, and we can do it together. And in really building those systems that support you and your family and empower them to take their own personal responsibility, to have pride of ownership of what they do and of what they're putting out into the world, even if what they're putting out into the world is a cheese sandwich, a grilled cheese sandwich for their kid. So, um, awesome, fascinating. I'm like, I'm loving everything you're saying. Um, so what, what other secrets do you think that uh, people know? I mean, th these are two big gems that you just shared, basically. That if, if everybody could just go ahead and make sure that they implement the ability to receive and also then the delegation and being a team player, um, these are fundamental things that make a unit, a family unit functional, basically. Uh, so you're not pulling everybody else's weight, basically. Um, so yeah, it's hard when you're pulling everybody else's weight. It's, it, and it, the thing is, is that it also builds up resentment mm -hmm. and it, it, resentment and blame is a dangerous spiral. It is a dangerous, dangerous spiral. And because blame it's, and, and a lot of times for a high achievers, they are very skilled at also taking the blame on themselves. So there's blame in both ways. There's blaming the husband, and that's what I, I mean, I, I was there. I was, I was blaming my husband of like, oh, why isn't he like taking the kid more? Well, he couldn't read my mind. <laughs> like, I had to ask him. Like, he didn't know I was struggling. I didn't tell him. So being explicit with your communication and, and really having that, that level of candor in your relationship and being candid about how you're feeling, being candid about, hey, you got to, I need you to step up a little bit. Like I need you to step up and do the dishes, please. Like, or I need you to step up and pick up your toys. Having that candid communication instead, so, because so often we are implicit with our communication. And that's really one of my, my secrets is be candid. And it, it's actually kinder to be candid because it's like ripping a Band-Aid off rather than having to unstitch and rehabilitate a gangrenous wound that has been built up with blame and shame and pus. Right. Like, no one wants that. <laughs> so when you're candid, it's actually coming from a place of kindness where you say exactly what it is you need or want. And then I... You know, if that person can do it, rock on. If not, you can discuss it, but you at least have that foundation of authentic candor where it's there instead of like, and, and this comes down to asking, like asking for help. There's a big difference between asking and saying, hey, hubby, love you. Can, can, can you really help me? I've, I've got a, a meeting full of, uh, a morning full of meetings. And like, if you could just take our son out to the park and just take him and, and spend some quality time with him. I'll take him in the afternoon. Cool. Then that, that, that's, that's an ask. That is an actual ask. Can you do this? Instead of, I've got so many meetings. I'm so overwhelmed. Okay. Like <laughs> that's okay. Like that you're that there's no action. There's no question. There's no step afterward. So often I, I, and I, I learned this when, um, when my husband and I first got together, we were setting our boundaries and my husband and I had both been cheated on in past relationships. His was pretty epic and it ended in his divorce of his first marriage. And, um, and so I wanted to be really respectful with him. And so we, we set out the foundation of like, what are the, the boundaries that we have? What is, how do we define cheating as a couple? How do we define um, that? 
because there's multiple definitions. Like everybody has a different definition for something. Like you have a different definition for health than what someone else thinks that is healthy. Exactly. The same is true for the word cheating. Like some people think that they're like, oh, emotional cheating, like then that's it. Some people think, oh, it's, it's physical. So we set the, those foundations and it was in that explicit candid conversation that it actually built a really strong foundation of intimacy and trust mm -hmm. because we knew the, 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 the castle walls in essence for our relationship. That, and in past relationships that I'd been in, the co conversation of cheating had been implicit, where I'd been like, oh, I'd been cheated on. Well, that sucks. Yeah. I mean, that sucks. But that's not an action. That's not saying, it, that's not a boundary. That's not saying, here's a candid scenario. If you do A, I do B. Like, that is explicit conversation. Yeah. So, hey... If you take care of my son, if you take care of our son for the first half of the day, I'll take care of him so you can work with your clients in the second half of the day. Like that's, that's explicit conversation. A, A results in B. Otherwise, if it's like this blanketed statement of like implicit, implied, overwhelm, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm struggling, then your partner can't read your mind right. and it's necessary for you to clear, have the clarity, which is why it's one of the pillars of high performance, have the clarity of what do you need help with? What do you need to be asking for support with? What do you need to be delegating? What do you need to be empowering your family unit with so that it's off your plate so that you're no longer overwhelmed and so that you can feel more empowered and have them feel empowered too. Awesome. But it's fantastic, the communication and everything. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing those. So how can people find out more about you and, uh, and basically if, if they want to work with you? Yeah. Yeah. You can go to crownyourself.com. And if you would like, if you love this conversation, if you'd love to learn about how you can find some more clarity or some more energy or like really get aligned with those goals and get productive and see what time wasters are going down, what productive procrastination might be happening, then definitely go to crownyourself.com and then you can just click on the tab that says work with me and I have all the programs and opportunities for you to be able to do so. And you can always, if you love this interview, please leave a comment down below. You can find me on YouTube on my channel at crown yourself. And you can also find me on Instagram. If you want to just drop me a DM and have a chat about this episode, I would love to chat with you about what your big takeaways, aha, breakaways, breakthroughs were for this, for this time together. Awesome. I'm going to make sure that the links are all in the description. Make sure you go ahead and check Kimberly's YouTube channel as well. And uh, you work with clients all over the world, correct? I do. Yeah, yeah, totally virtual business. I, it, being in Australia, I'm blessed to work with all of my U.S. clients um, and North America clients in the morning, and then I work with all my U.S. and uh, my U.K. and European clients in the evening. So okay. that is that is always fun. And um, as a, a gift for your listeners, I do want to offer my uh, my Build Your Dream Queen team. Now, this is more for business owners, but if you can think about it from the perspective of household items as well. And I do go into how to build your dream queen team because a part of your dream team is your family. It is the people that, that you have chosen to be your life partner. It is your kids that, that have been blessed into your life. And so I would love to offer that for free to your, to your viewers and to your, to your community. Wow, thanks Kimberly. That's very generous of you. I really appreciate that. You guys, make sure you take advantage of that offer. The link is in the description. Please go ahead and check it out. You, we all need people on our team. We all need to build our dream team and continue to work on it. So definitely, definitely take her up on that offer. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for the audience, for, for the chance, that, uh, for, for being here with us and listening to us. Uh, I really appreciate it. Any thank final you words? so much. Just be the A player in your team. That's, real, that's the, really the big thing. Love it. Love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. L. My pleasure. Take care, guys.